Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko met Russian President Vladimir Putin in Sochi today. They held bilateral talks and discussed international and regional issues. Lukashenko said Belarus was ready to increase fuel shipment to Russia. Both leaders agreed to deepen bilateral ties. Russian's Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu inspected a shipyard today. He says that Russia will get at least 12 ships before the end of this year. He added that new nuclear submarines were being built, which will enter service by 2024. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un visited an aircraft factory in Russia's Far East region. During his visit, he was shown Russia's most advanced stealth fighter jet. Kim was also shown Russian-made aircraft that are meant for civilian purposes. US President Joe Biden's son Hunter Biden has been indicted by the American Department of Justice. This is in connection with Hunter Biden's purchase of a gun in 2018. According to the charges, Hunter Biden lied on a federal form about drug use while purchasing the firearm. If Hunter Biden pleads guilty, he will face up to 10 years in prison. This is the first time that the Justice Department has charged the child of a sitting US president. NASA has named a new director that will oversee the research of UAPs, earlier known as UFOs. UAP stands for Unidentified Anomalous Phenomena. The new NASA research chief will also be given access to classified military reports of UAP sightings. A special panel has been formed to assist the director in the research. The US is seeking access to more military bases in the Philippines. A senior military general said the US has requested access to more bases. However, a new agreement on additional bases is yet to be signed. In March, the Philippines gave America access to four bases, taking the total to nine. <laughs> Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Mane arrived in China's capital, Beijing, yesterday. This is his first official foreign trip since becoming the Prime Minister in August. Hun Mane is slated to meet both China's President Xi Jinping and Premier Li Jiang during the trip. Thailand's Pita Lim Jaron Rat has resigned as the leader of the Move Forward Party. He says that the party needs a new figure to lead the opposition in the parliament. Move Forward Party now represents the bulk of the opposition. Pita was once the hopeful to become Thailand's prime minister. However, he was suspended from the parliament due to a court case concerning his eligibility to run for office. A military convoy of Niger's army has reached the border region of neighbouring Benin today. This is part of Niger Junta's show of force after the severe ties with their fellow West African nation. Meanwhile, Benin has authorised the deployment of soldiers and war materials to its borders with Niger. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said his government will invest over $250 million in the National Health Service or NHS. Sunak added that the funding will boost operations in hospitals before the busy winter months. The 75-year-old NHS is struggling to keep up with an increase in patients. Currently, over 7.5 million people are on the waitlist for getting NHS treatment. Italy saw the arrival of almost 2,000 asylum seekers yesterday. Deputy Prime Minister Matteo Salvini says the country is struggling to cope with the surge of migrants. He further added that France and Germany have rejected Italy's appeal to help with the crisis. Just this year, Italy has received over 120,000 asylum seekers. The European Union High Representative Josep Borrell met with the leaders of Serbia and Kosovo. They discussed ways to defuse tensions after violence erupted in North Kosovo earlier this year. In late May, ethnic Albanian mayors took office following local elections that were boycotted by ethnic Serbs. Borel said that the EU wanted to see new elections take place immediately.
Mexican authorities found 350 migrants crammed in the back of a trailer. The discovery was made when officials heard cries and knocking at the back of the vehicle. On board were women, men and miners from Guatemala, Ecuador, Honduras and El Salvador. The miners and families found in the trailer will remain under the custody of Mexico's local family welfare system. Meanwhile, the rest of the adults have been taken to a facility of Mexico's National Migration Institute. The Dominican Republic will shut its entire border with neighbouring Haiti. The closures will take effect from 6 a.m. local time today. This comes amid a conflict over the construction of a water channel from a shared river. The Dominican Republic argues that the Haitian construction work off the Massacre River violates a 1929 treaty. Argentine leftist worker organizations took to the streets of Buenos Aires. They were protesting against Javier Milei, who is leading the country's presidential poll. Protesters expressed their fear regarding Milley's controversial political outlook. Demonstrators added that they would oppose Milley's proposal if he wins Argentina's presidential election in the month of October. The World Health Organization, or WHO, has released funds worth over $2 million for flood victims in Libya. The WHO has also dispatched medical and emergency supplies along with the financial aid. According to UN officials, over 10,000 people have been killed by floods in the North African nation. At least 3 million people have been impacted by the disaster. In climate news, volunteers in the Philippines took part in a trash-picking drive ahead of the International Coastal Cleanup Day today. Over 50 bags of trash were cleaned up from a coastal area near the capital Manila. As per a University of Oxford study, the Philippines is the worst polluter of single-use plastic waste into the ocean. The International Coastal Cleanup Day is held annually on the third Saturday in the month of September. Several climate activists were arrested outside Citibank's headquarters in New York City yesterday. Over 20 protesters were arrested and were released later in the day. The demonstrators were demanding that Citibank end financing fossil fuel projects. Marine experts have launched a campaign to protect the broad-nosed seven-gill shark in America's San Francisco Bay Area. Scientists say the population of these sharks is decreasing due to climate change. The El Nino weather pattern has increased rainfall in California and this is causing fresh water to run off into the ocean, thereby altering salinity levels. Scientists say this is becoming toxic for broad-nosed seven-gill sharks, causing their numbers to fall rapidly. A species of snails that was once extinct in the wild has been reintroduced in the Pacific Islands. The snails were bred in the UK and are back in French Polynesia as part of a nine-year-long project. Scientists say the snails are crucial in speeding up the decomposition of dead vegetation. They added that these snails leave behind nutrient-rich feces that help develop the soil. In business and tech, America's United Auto Workers Union has launched its historic strike against automakers Ford, General Motors and Stellantis. Nearly 13,000 workers are picketing outside the three automakers' plants. Walkouts began after a midnight deadline for a labor deal passed without agreement. The union has been demanding a 40% rise in pay, job security and the removal of a tiered wage system. Shares in semiconductor company Arm soared almost 25% above its Nasdaq debut price. The stock, which had opened at $56, closed at nearly $64. This gave the British chip designer a valuation of $65 billion in its return to public markets. Johnson & Johnson is signing off on a new logo. The healthcare giant has said that it will replace its well-known signature script after more than a century. The company says that the new logo reflects their sharpened focus on quote-unquote 
innovative medicine and medical technology. J&J has also renamed its medical device devices business called Janssen Pharmaceutical to J&J Innovative Medicine. Walt Disney has reportedly held talks with American TV station operator Nexstar Media Group. This is for selling its US TV network ABC. Meanwhile, media entrepreneur Byron Allen has also submitted a $10 billion bid to Disney. This is to acquire ABC, cable, channel, cable channels rather, FX, and National Geographic and its other local stations. In July, Disney CEO Bob Iger said that the company could sell off some of its traditional TV assets that were not performing well. Ride-hailing company Uber says it has rejected a ruling from a Brazilian labor court. It had asked the company to pay more than $200 million in fines. This was over the company's irregular working relations with the drivers on its app. Uber says it will appeal the court's decision. Google will pay $93 million to the US state of California. This is to resolve a lawsuit that accused the tech giant of misleading consumers about its location tracking practices. The company has been accused of deceiving people about its data collection methods. California said Google was able to profile people and target them at advertising. This is even if they turned off their location history setting. Apple has said it would issue a software update for iPhone 12 users in France. This is to settle recent allegations by the country's regulators. Earlier this week, France ordered the suspension of the sale of iPhone 12 in the country. This was due to alleged breaches of radiation exposure limits. Meanwhile, Belgium has said it will review potential health risks linked to Apple's iPhone 12. This has raised prospects of the model's potential ban among European countries. This comes after France ordered a halt to the sales of the iPhone 12 model earlier this week. France says it was banned because the phone breaches radiation exposure limits. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will fly to California next week. There he will meet billionaire Elon Musk. This comes as Elon Musk finds himself embroiled in an anti-Semitism controversy. He has been accused by civil rights groups of amplifying anti-Jewish sentiment on his social media platform X, or formerly known as Twitter. However, Musk posted on X that his meeting with Netanyahu would focus on AI technology and not the controversy. A drinks company in Poland has appointed an artificial intelligence robo as its experimental CEO. The technology is, however, in probation. The robo CEO will lead the company in areas like communication or strategic planning. Moving to sports, in cricket, Sri Lanka beat Pakistan by two wickets in the Super 4 match of the Asia Cup yesterday. The match was reduced to 42 overs due to rain. Opting to bat first, Pakistan posted 252 runs for 7 wickets in 42 overs. Mohammad Rizwan and Abdullah Shafiq backed Pakistan with their half-centuries. Kushal Mendes helped Sri Lanka chase down the target by scoring 91 runs. After that, Charita Salanka's unbeaten 49 helped Sri Lanka swing the match their way. Now, Sri Lanka will take on India in the final on Sunday. England's all-rounder Ben Stokes revealed that he knew he would return to the one-day international cricket for the 2023 World Cup. Ben Stokes had announced his retirement from ODIs last year. After the Ashes Test Series, he even ruled out the possibility of playing in the World Cup. The 32-year-old cited his knee injury as the reason to not return to the ODI squad. He said, and I quote, I knew that I'd be playing in these games and potentially in the World Cup. Then when I said that, but it was just the easiest thing to say, to say that and put you off, that's the media, off the radar. Meanwhile, former Australian leg spinner Stuart McGill has been charged with supplying drugs. The Australian police say he was allegedly involved in a commercial scale cocaine deal. The retired cricketer came under the spotlight after he was kidnapped in, the, in April 2021. After a lengthy inquiry, 
The police found that the abduction was related to his involvement in the drug deal. In football, the list of nominees for the FIFA Best Player of the Year award is out. Lionel Messi, Kylian Mbappe and Erling Haaland are on the list. Manchester City's manager Pep Guardiola is nominated for the Best Men's Coach. The voting for the 8th annual awards began yesterday on FIFA.com and will close mid-October. Meanwhile, 16 nominees have been shortlisted for the Women's Award. Spain's Aitana Bonmati and Ginny Hermoso are in the running for the Best Player title. Spain's Women's World Cup winning coach Jorge Vilda, who was fired recently, was left off the list. England coach Sarina Wegman, whose team lost to Spain in the FIFA Women's World Cup final, was nominated as well. Al Ittihad defeated Al Ugdud 1 0 in the Saudi Pro League yesterday. Karim Benzema scored the only goal in the match in the 72nd minute. The French striker struck the ball with his knee and netted the goal. In tennis, world number one Novak Djokovic is looking forward to the 2024 Paris Olympics now. The 36 year old is now looking to bag an Olympic gold medal after his 24th Grand Slam. Djokovic said, and I quote, My plan for now is to play the Olympic Games, so I'm hoping that I will be ready physically and mentally. Top seed Ons Jabor was knocked out of the San Diego Open. She suffered a 6-4, 7-6 defeat to Anastasia Potpova of Russia. Potpova admitted that Jabor was a very tough opponent to beat as she spoke about her victory. The Indian Sports Ministry released a revised list of the Indian Asian Games contingent yesterday. The list has 22 additional athletes who will represent the country in the upcoming event. The ministry also named 25 replacements, which includes athletes, support staff and coaches. The total strength of the Indian contingent is now 921. Mercedes racer Lewis Hamilton said Formula One needs to take more action to combat discrimination. This comes against the backdrop of offensive comments made by Red Bull's boss Helmut Marko. Marko had blamed Sergio Perez's inconsistent performances for Red Bull on his ethnicity. The Red Bull boss said that Perez was not as focused as Max Verstappen or Sebastian Vettel because he was South American. Marko has apologized public publicly for his inappropriate comments. Hamilton condemned his offensive remarks and said they were unacceptable. In entertainment, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, the organization that represents Hollywood studios, has said that the Writers Guild of America has reached out to start negotiations. The talks between the Hollywood studios and striking writers are likely to continue next week. The ongoing talks between the two sides had hit a standstill in late August. The WG has suggested that Hollywood studios break away from the AMPTP and reach individual deals with the union. The series Mr. and Mrs. Smith has been delayed to 2024. This comes after the Hollywood writers and actors strike seems to be nowhere near the end. The project was scheduled for a November 2023 release but it has been postponed after actor Donald Glover's deal with Amazon Prime was suspended amid the strikes. The Mr. and Mrs. Smith show is based on the 2000 film, 2005 film rather, of the same name that starred actors Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Model Bella Hadid was seen with a completely shaven head in a new ad campaign. This comes just a month after Hadid underwent treatment for Lyme disease. She has been battling the chronic condition for almost 15 years. In a statement, she said, and I quote, to be that sad and sick with the most blessings, privilege, opportunity and love around me was quite possibly the most confusing thing ever. London Fashion Week has kicked off. High-profile celebrities from music, fashion and film industry walked the red carpet at London's Theatre Royal Drury Lane. Actors who attended the event included Kate Winslet, Jared Leto, James McVoy. 
Rappers Tom Z and fashion designer Stella McCartney also attended the event. The band NSYNC is gearing up to release their first new song in over two decades. Their new song is called Better Place. The news came after bandmates Justin Timberlake, JC Chases, Josie Fatton, Lance Bass and Chris Kirkpatrick reunited at the 2023 Video Music Awards. The boy band is famous for their songs Bye Bye Bye, Gone and This I Promise You. Actor and comedian Adam Sandler has announced a comedy tour in North America. His show is called I Missed You. Sandler will embark on a tour of 25 cities on the 12th of October. His first destination will be the Canadian city of Vancouver. Sandler teased the show with a promotional video with the caption, Let's have some fun. In a recent interview, Oscar-winning actor Natalie Portman spoke about the concept of female gaze. Portman said, and I quote, To say that a female director has a particular gaze is reductive of women's individuality and points of view. She added that female directors should have the same opportunities as their male counterparts and that it should not be about gender. Natalie Portman began her journey as an actor when she was just 11 years old. Cure I star Karamo Brown has spoken about why he was not invited to co-star Anthony Porowalski's bachelor party. During a chat with talk show host Andy Cohen, Brown said, and I quote, I was not invited. Just Stan was invited. Brown added that there were there are no hard feelings, saying when it comes to events like that, it costs money, so I don't take offense to it. Anthony Porowalski got engaged to his boyfriend Kevin Harrington in November 2022. Porowalski, Brown, and Tan France starred in Netflix's show Cure, Cure Eye together and have been friends ever since. Singer Demi Lovato has spoken about the struggles she faced after her near-fatal drug overdose in 2018. The singer called herself California Sober. California Sober is a term used to describe somebody who uses cannabis but avoids other drugs. She added, and I quote, All I did was replace my addiction with something I thought was safer. A documentary called Demi Lovato, Dancing with the Devil was released in 2021. In the series, Lovato opened up about her heroin addiction and overdose. Brazilian singer and songwriter Anita has opened up on a recent health scare. She said she was hospitalized for months towards the end of 2022. The singer added that she feared she had cancer. Despite going through a number of medical tests, her condition remained a mystery. Anita further added that she sought spiritual treatment, which mentally empowered her. Hello, Namaskar. This is First 